Hi everyone, welcome to Textual Criticism of the Old Testament. This is a continuation of a series that we did last week. Uh, we'll do it today and tomorrow, then get into some more uh, interesting sort of linguistic stuff. But today we're going to talk about these funny little things called Kare Kathiv writings. And uh, if you've studied Hebrew and you've worked with your uh, BHS, your <clears throat> Your Hebrew Bible, you've probably run across Kare Kathiv's. Well, I, I think it'd be a good idea for everybody to understand sort of what these writings are, what the scribes were trying to do, the Masoretic scribes were trying to do in, in uh, putting them there, <clears throat> and how it can help us understand some of the um, subtleties maybe of, of Old Testament textual criticism. So we're going to take a look at what Kare Kathiv's are, um, figure out how to recognize and understand them, and then we're going to briefly look at something that they call the perpetual Kareikathiv and uh, what that means and what significance that can play when we try to understand the uh, Hebrew text. So let's just take a look at it and see if we can break it down in understandable terms. So <clears throat> sometimes a scribe who is copying the text uh, would question the words or the forms that he was copying. So let's say He's uh, copying through the book of uh, Genesis, and he sees a word in the text, and he thinks, eh, I think that this is wrong. I think this is an error. <coughs> Excuse me. The problem is that they considered that text sacred, so they didn't want to just go changing it. They didn't want to write what they thought was the correct form. So instead of changing the consonants, which is you know what was <coughs> the, uh, the big thing in the text, uh, the primary thing in the text, what was transmitted down, initially anyway, they wrote the vowels, which in Hebrew are written above, usually above and below, sometimes right in the middle of the consonants, but usually usually below or above the consonants. <clears throat> they wrote the, the vowels for the word that they thought was the correct word around the consonants that were in the text. And what this produced was sort of a goofy looking word that didn't make any sense. So <clears throat> then they would put the correct consonants out in the margin. Okay, maybe that didn't make any sense. So let me see if I can put it into easier to understand terms. If you've watched our videos on textual criticism, you might recognize this. This was that letter exercise that I did. And if we come down here to the, to the signature where it says, see you, Frank, let's say the scribe saw that word Frank and they thought, uh, I don't think it's Frank. I think he meant to say Robert. It was supposed to be Robert because we know from the context that it's actually Robert that's writing these letters, for example, and maybe Frank wrote another letter, but that's why the scribe made this mistake. So he didn't want to change Frank. <clears throat> of course, all they had were the, the consonants. He didn't want to change the word Frank. So what he did is he took the vowels from the word Robert, so the O and the E from Robert, and put them on the consonants of the word Frank, and came up with this word Franek, for example. And of course, we look at that and we say, what in the world is Franek? Then we would look out in the margin, and we would see Robert with the word read underneath of it. And we would say, oh, okay. So the person copying this didn't want to change the word Frank, even though he didn't think Frank was the right word. So he used the consonants for Frank, F-R-N-K, and the vowels for Robert, and put them together to make this weird looking word so that we as the reader would be reading through and we'd say, see you, Franek. What in the world is fr Oh, maybe this is a, oh yeah, out here in the margin, Robert. That's what he's trying, and, and he's got this little note that says, read Robert. Well, <clears throat> Kare Kathiv, are, those are Aramaic words. And Kare means what is read, that which is read. And Kathiv means that which is written. And so, in our example, the Kathiv, that which is written, would be this form, and the Kare what is read would be this form. So essentially the scribe is trying to say, 
I want to keep the consonants for this word that's in the text, but I want to add the vowels from this word, and that'll give you this goofy looking form that should tell you, hey, go out to the margin and see if there's a caray out there, a word to be read. And yep, sure enough, there it is. So how does this play out in the Hebrew Bible? So the word in the text will appear very strange, like our word phronic, having vowels that do not seem to go with the consonants. That tells you to go out to the margin where the correct consonants, at least what the scribe considers to be the correct consonants, will often appear, and I say often because of what we're going to talk about a little bit later, along with the Hebrew letter kof underneath of it, and that is the first letter. The kof is the first letter of the word kore. So the scribe is trying to tell you, kore, read uh, what is written, these, these letters. So let me just show it to you here in the text. So here's... Um, screenshot of the book of Joshua. And down here in the highlighted section, we see this word gavol, ha gavol. And it doesn't, it's, it's a weird word, right? Like, what does that mean? Um, because we're used to seeing the word gavul or gavul here. But gavol is just a weird word, right? That doesn't seem to make any sense in this context. And if we look out in the margin, lo and behold, we have uh, a little mark, and I'll, I'll bring it up here a little bit. Notice the word, or the, uh, the kof, this is the, the Hebrew letter kof from kare, first letter in the word kare. And the scribe is telling you, this is what it what should be read, right? And what they're telling you is, use these consonants and these vowels. This little T looking thing down here is a vowel. This little dot up here is a vowel. And there, this is the ah sound and the o oh sound. And what they're trying to tell you is, put this vowel down here under the G the gimel, this is a gimel, a G sound, and put this dot, this holum, the O sound, above this vowel here. And what you will see then is this word becomes hagadol, which means big. And you say, oh, or big, or great, okay. Well, this says, and the great C. Well, that makes sense, right? That, that makes sense in the context. So what they're trying to tell you is use these consonants with these vowels. That is the kare and the kathiv. So they don't end up changing the consonants at all. All they do is put weird vowels on the consonants, which doesn't make any, which form a word that doesn't make any sense in the context. And that should trigger you as the reader to go out to the margin and look for this kof right here. And then say, oh, here are the consonants that he's trying to tell me to read. So that is uh, the scribe's way of correcting the text without physically or actually correcting it in the, uh, in the body of the text itself. So we know what a Kare Kathiv is. We know how to identify it. Now, there is something called a perpetual Kare Kathiv. And if you think to yourself, well, geez, what if there's a word that, because <clears throat> um, it's not always a word that, um, the scribe thought was an error, maybe it's a word that they think shouldn't be pronounced out loud. For example, the word Yahweh or Yahweh or Adonai or however you want to say it. Let's say Yahweh. Um, they didn't want to pronounce out loud, say out loud the word Yahweh. And so what they did is they chose to say Adonai, Lord, my Lord, instead. Um, and so what they did, because Yahweh occurs so often in the text, uh, they didn't want to put out in the margin forever. I mean, it would really, um, you know, clog up or fill up the margins uh, with this word that's used so often in the Hebrew Bible. So what they did 
is they, they just assumed that as a reader, you would know that uh, when you see, when you saw these words that are, that appear over and over and over and over again, that are a Kareka thief to the scribes, that you would just know, oh, this is that really common word. The vowels don't go with these consonants in the text. So words that occur very frequently will often only have the vowels changed in the text, but have no Kare in the margin. Let's take a look. So last uh, last week we looked at Exodus chapter 3, and uh, up at the very top you see the tetragrammaton. This is the word Yahweh, or Yahweh, however you want to pronounce it. But notice there's nothing out here in the margin. And if you look at the, if you, if you know Hebrew and you look at the vowels, the vowel pointing here, they don't actually go with these consonants. Right? This is an eh sound, this is an ah sound. Um, and that they don't go with these consonants. However, they do go with the word Adonai. They go with that the word that uh, the Kare that would be out here if it weren't so common that they didn't think they needed to put it out here. But these go with the consonants for Adonai, my Lord, uh, in the plural. And so um, this is called a perpetual Karekathiv because they're just changing the vowels. They're just pointing these weird vowels in here because they assume that you know when you read through here that you wouldn't read Vayar Yeva. You would read Vayar Adonai. So um, that's a perpetual Karekathiv. And these, these occur in the, in the Hebrew text with some frequency. So, that's a good segue for what we're going to talk about tomorrow because the name Jehovah uh, is a direct result of misunderstanding this Kare Kathiv phenomenon. And so tomorrow what we'll do is I'll show you where Jehovah comes from and uh, why, it's, why it's actually not meant as an, an actual word at least by the Masoretes. So tune in tomorrow to see the, uh, the error that is Jehovah. That sounds really bad, but the, the, the error that is the, the word Jehovah. Okay, see you guys tomorrow.